refugee from the Republic of Georgia, and I want my human rights, just like the President Obama says. Okay, about time. It fits my shirt. Obama wants to let everybody in. That look real nice for a green card. We're going to start talking about now about uh, preparation for Yom Kippur because we have to now to get ready for that for that uh, special day, right? It's a very, very holy day. We don't very, suffer enough. During, very momentous during day. Regular day so. Is there shofar so, on that day? Can they say, right, that? regarding what's the connection between... Yeah, we do a little bit shofar, a little bit. In the end, in the end of the prayers, we do a little bit. They say, right, that uh, what's the connection between Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah? How does that, how does that all work together? Right, right? the... Uh, so it works like this, right? That Rosh Hashanah is the day of judgment. So what does that mean? Everybody's judged. Whether you ad acquire, uh, admit you're judged or you don't admit, you right, you know about it, you don't know about it. it doesn't matter whether you know whether it's willing or not willing, right? Willing accomplice, not willing accomplice. It doesn't make any difference. Everybody's judged. Everything is judged. Uh, that's by the way the reason why they say that the the, the days of Rosh Hashanah are so so strong, judge such strong judgment. They say because of that. This is the reason why the Zohar Kadosh says, this is the reason why they didn't make the redemption, right? The final redemption of the Jewish people, they didn't make it in this month of Tishrei. <coughs> why did they make it in this month? Because the judgment is so strong that a lot of people wouldn't be, be merit to, uh, to, be, to be saved. Right? We said that, right? We talked about that. Who's they? Uh, I'm sorry? Who's they? Oh. Who are the people that are they? Not people. Just right, we're talking about... In the heavens, right? Right. Yeah, that's what. That's what. That's what. Right, exactly. Oh. I'm that's, sorry, I didn't get the question. Right. I didn't understand the question. So uh, this is the reason why uh, Rosh Hashanah is a very, very strong judgment, and a person has to be very, very careful about doing tshuva, about repenting from his bad deeds, and so forth. So on. As you all know. So they say, right, that how does how does Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur fall together, and also Sukkot, these three holidays are all juxtaposed one to another. So Rosh Hashanah is a day where everything is written down, meaning what the judgment is written down, everything. Everything is written clearly, what that person is going to have next year, what he's not going to have, how much he's going to make, how much he's going to lose, how much he's going to suffer, how much he's going to, you know, all these, all these things, right, whatever it is, you know. If he's going to go to jail, not go to jail, right, he's going to live, not to live, right, everything is, everything is judged, everything is, uh, that's the way it is, right. So now, what's left? We have, we have now 10 days of penitence. 10 days of penitence, right? That's where we, where we are now. So those 10 days of penitence between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they want you to do tshuva. And if you do, even though they wrote down everything already, that can be changed, can be altered again, still. You still have a chance to alter that. All you got to do is do tshuva. So what they do is, if you do tshuva, they're going to rewrite for you a new summons, right? A new, a new verdict. Can you imagine? It's going to be all rewritten, everything. So there's still time to, to change, to hit the jackpot, you know, to get a good judgment. Everything can be, can be turned upside down. And also the other way around, if it goes bad in the bad direction also, it can be also changed in the bad direction as well. To the worst. Yeah, sure. That's the way it is. So how bad, uh, can, it get? How bad can it get? Right, exactly. So Yom Kippur, they say, right, that Yom Kippur, what is that? What, what's the analogy? What's the uh, right parable? The parable is that on Yom Kippur, it's like the day that they they put the verdict into an envelope. You know, they seal it. That's it, sealed. It's a next step, right, from the judgment. But still, if you if they do if you do tshuva, it can still be changed after Yom Kippur. What does that mean? Now they give you until Hoshana Rabbah, which is the last day of Sukkot, right? Sukkot, the holiday, Sukkot holiday is seven days. Then we have Shemini Yatzeret, right, which is a different holiday. Two different holidays <coughs> juxtaposed together. No work for two weeks. Very nice, yeah. So what we say is like this, right, that uh, on, on Yom Kippur, they put it inside the envelope, and then, right, on Hoshana Rabbah, which is the last day, it's given over, you know, that's it. No more return, that's it, right? That Nobody can change it anymore. That's the... So, if a person... I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about that, what you're, what you're saying. So, uh, it's good that you mentioned it. We're saying like this, right, that Hoshana Rabbah is the last day that a person can do tshuva. First they tell you on Rosh Hashanah to do, do tshuva. You know, Chodesh Elul. First they give you Chodesh Elul, right, the whole month of Elul, which is before Rosh Hashanah, that's the time of tshuva. Okay, you didn't do, okay, Rosh Hashanah do. If you didn't do Rosh Hashanah, 10 days of penitence. If you didn't do 10 days of penitence, do Yom Kippur. 
If you didn't do Yom Kippur, do Sukkot. If you didn't do Sukkot, no Shana Rabba is the last day. Right? That's it. That's the, that's the way it goes. So you see, all these all, all these things are linked together. I'm going to talk about that too. Uh, Simchat Torah. What what does that have to? What what is what's 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 the significance of, of that? Right? Because really, the truth is, the Simchat Torah comes after Hoshana Rabbah. Hoshana Rabbah is the day that we go around seven times, you know, on the uh, in, in the in the shul, and we have we're holding those uh, those myrtles, right? That we're holding those uh, the arava, not the myrtle, right? The, the, Willow. the willows, right? Exactly. We're holding, holding those those willows, and we're, and we're 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 striking them on the ground. That's what we do, right? Um, in the end of the prayers, and we go around seven times. So that day, it's a long prayer because it's the last day that a person can do tshuva. So they give you a lot of chance to do sikhot, you know, to beat on your chest and say, you know, I sinned, blah, blah, blah. to really do tshuva still, you know, and to try to do, uh, to, to repent. So all this is like a, you know, it's just like a one, one after the other. They give you another chance, another chance, another chance, consecutively, right? You're going from one step to another. So they say, right, if you didn't do, if you didn't do tshuva with the somber days, which is Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Those are somber days, very serious days, you know? So then they give you a chance not to do Shubah with Simcha, right? Sukkot is the time of Simcha, time of joy, right? So they say, okay, if you're not, if you're not one of those people who does Shubah in, in a somber manner, so do Shubah with joy, you know, with Sukkot, have, celebrate, you know, have a good time, and do Shubah like that, with happiness. So if you don't do that either, so then what, what's left? Hashanah Rabba is the last day they give you, right? And after that comes, as you said, comes Simcha Torah. So then, what is the significance of Simchat Torah? Why do we uh, why do we celebrate that? How does that fit into this whole scheme, right? Uh, this whole thing. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I want to tell you. Right, that what that Simchat Torah has also significant significance. What does that mean? That even though now the judgment has already been rendered and that cannot be changed anymore. That's it. It's sealed and delivered. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Right. That's it. But now we have a different thing, which is what? That we can, we can sweeten the judgment. There's something like that, a concept like that. What does that mean? You've been judged now to, have, to do all kinds of things, all kinds of suffering, all kinds of things, you know, mishaps, we shouldn't see from it, right? So if that's the case, you want to make those judgments as sweet as possible. What does that mean? That they shouldn't be too harsh, too, you know, too unbearable. They shouldn't be too overwhelming. Bribery. So when we do is when we dance on Simchat Torah, that's why, by the way, they say right that a person on Simchat Torah don't be a stiff on Simchat Torah. You know, we we, we still, you know we, that was our favorite word, right? Don't be stiff. What does that mean? Don't stand there like a tree. You know, everybody's dancing and you're standing there. You like you can't move. You know, like you got a spasm in his muscles. You know, you cannot move around. What are you doing? That's not what Simchat Torah is for. You gotta go and move. You know, this is the time now. You know, this is the time to dance. It's time to move around, sing, dance, jump, you know, do something, clap your hands. Do this again, move your body, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's the time to do it. So why? Why is that? Because that dancing that they do, and when you sweat, right, from that, that sweat that comes out of your brow, that's what gives, sweetens the judgment, uh, you know, that, that, that you, you already got. So you want to sweeten as much as possible, right? So why? If something happens... You know, it shouldn't be too bitter, it shouldn't be too harsh, you know, it becomes unbearable. Like, you know, there are people who go, you know, I don't want to mention anybody's name, right, but there's somebody I, I know who's, you know, is in jail right now, you know. And uh, what happened was that they judged him, you know, in the court. This was like two years ago, whatever. And um, what happened was that the judge gave him like a pretty harsh sentence. It gave him like 12 years, 13 years, whatever, something like that. And uh, he also sent them to like a pretty nasty jail, not the, not like not like the worst, you know, not like Rikers Island, you know, not like something like that, but also a pretty nasty one, pretty bad one, you know, like not exactly the white collar type of the place, you know what I mean? So he sent it to one of those places because he wanted to like he had that you know he had something against him, you know, he wanted to get him, he wanted to you know, he wanted to show him his boss, right? Exactly, right? So he put him in a, in a bad place, relatively speaking, bad, because this guy's a, he's a white collar guy, this guy, you know. He's not, he's not, uh, you know, one of these, uh, he's not a hardened criminal, you know, something like that. He's a white collar, you know. So what happened was that now I heard just a couple of weeks ago, they moved him to another jail, right? So what's the other jail? The other jail is like a, it's like a hotel. It's like a, it's like a nice camp, you know, like you, 
you have like nice woods and Coming camp. Down. You can walk around. There's, you're not down. in the cell. Oh. Exactly. You're not jailed. You're not in the cell. You can just walk around anywhere on the grounds, you know. You know, hanging around, having a good time. And you get good food also, by the way. They give you steaks, you know. You got you have kosher over there. You have a shul to pray in. Can you imagine? Uh -huh. You can pray. You have a minyan. You know, it's like a, it's like a hotel. It's like, a, you know, going upstate for, for, uh, for vacation. I want to go to church. You know? <laughs> Okay. Did he make so, what he did? <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know, you're still in jail. I mean, what does that mean? You're in jail. You're confined. That, you're, you're confined. confined. Yeah, you can't move around. Exactly. You're not free to do anything you want. Yeah. Also, he can't go into internet. He cannot go like into Facebook. You know, he has he has he has emails, but they read his emails. You know, they're screened. Right. They have to go. He has to go through a screen. You know, so it's not exactly like, you know, paradise, you know what I mean? But still, you can't compare it to being, you know, being with, in a jail with barbed wire and cells, you know. When is he coming out, this guy? He's got 12 years. Oh, he has to serve all of it? He, he may get time off for, you know, good behavior, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or they may they, they may get an appeal, you know, whatever. You know, you know, you know what, what we say, right, regarding that. Hashem matir asurim, right? That's what the Torah says. Right? What does that mean? That God is the one who frees the prisoners. We think, you know, that we can do all kinds of efforts, you know, get a lawyer, this lawyer, that lawyer, you know, sharp guy, this sharp guy, you know, and try this one and try this method and a certain kind of appeal and go to this court and this court and that court and then all kinds of, but really the truth is, right, when he's going to come out, when Hashem decides that day he's going to come out. That's so it, right? we gotta try. Yeah. yeah, we try, you know, we try. But Yosef at Sadiq, you know, he was punished for that. You know, you know, yeah. we were talking about that, right? Yeah. Because he tried a little bit too hard. What does that mean? He asked somebody to try to get him out. That was for, for him, that was too much. You know what I mean? So, in so, essence, you're yeah. saying that uh, it was God who let OJ off. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I mean, if you, you want to gloves? Well, you know, to be honest with you, a person like that, um, if he gets off in this world, that means in the next world he's cooked, you know? He's cooked. He's cooked. Then they got him. They got him. They got because him. They, didn't, they weren't able to get him over here, they'll get him over there. No, no, they got him for the other thing. Right, but that's pretty, no, that's pretty light. I mean, you know, for killing two people... You know, that's not, exact, that's not exactly uh, nice the thing. proper sentence for killing but two people. Why, He's liable to death. Like doesn't make any day. difference. You kill two people, what does it matter? They slept, they didn't sleep, what, what difference is it? They're liable to death also. Never mind them, we're talking about him. Oh, no, I think they were divorced already at that time. Oh, were they? Yeah, I think oh, so, yeah, yeah, they were divorced too. Were they good uh, soulmates? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is, right, that either way, by the way, even if somebody's liable to death, that doesn't mean you can go and kill him. The court has to kill him, you know, not you, you know. It's not, uh, not, you know, you can't be a vigilante, you know, and just go and, uh, you know, kill no, no, Oh, yeah, you were liable to death, I'll kill you. Ja, who gave you permission? That was a crime that? of passion. It wasn't because he felt that... He Whatever it was, it was, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, the point is, right, that a person like that, who doesn't get in this world, in the next world, he'll be totally finished. So if I kill that's, a man... That's the, that's the way it is. So if somebody kills a man for the wrong reasons... Not self-defense... Self yeah, self-defense, he's right. That's the only really the just justification you have to do that. Otherwise, what, what defense is there? There's Otherwise, it's murder. Yeah. There's no, yeah, it's murder. Yeah, that's it. You know? That's the way it is. He's right. Why, you're planning something? You, said? <laughs> <laughs> you want to borrow the gun? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, okay, we got a little bit, a little bit off the topic, but uh, the point is, uh, what I was trying to say is like this, Robert Tyke, that a person can be judged, you know, like to go to jail, but he can go to, you know, the hotel jail, you know, or like, you know, Turkish jail, you know, which is something a little bit different, you know what I mean? Yeah, Turkey, right. you know, yeah, I mean, you know, you know what that is, right? Yeah. You know? He can go to Russian jail, you know, or he can go to Israeli jail, you know? Why, why, it's different, you two different things, you know what I mean? It's not yeah, the same thing. Jail. Israeli jail is like a hotel, you know, you go in there, you know, they give you, you can study Torah there, you know, they give you meals, you know, you feel like you're, you know, it's like a second home, you know what I'm saying? You can't go home to the <laughs> It's not exactly, you, you know what I mean? We had a, a few bad seeds in our uh, congregation with the, you know, the guys that you used to hang out when we were growing up on There isn't one guy, yeah, a Russian guy or whatever that was in Rikers that wasn't raped. Oh yeah, that's now a that's a, that's a dangerous so place. Don't, yeah. So don't even you talk about the Turkish jail yeah. because here it's bad enough. But Turkish, you know what it is, right? So Turkish is like you're in a hole. No. No, you're in a you're in a hole. You're in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. By the way, now it may be a little bit better, you know, because in the old days it was even worse. You know, now it may have gotten a little better. But whatever, okay. it doesn't make any difference. We're, we're anyway, the point is, find out. exactly, we shouldn't find out from it. Remember that movie? Uh, the, the bricks, you know, a, 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 a woman. Uh, you might know who it is. Uh, a Russian woman. Yeah. This is going back many many years now. Uh, the, the, the 
flax, they went into the, broke into the apartment, they threw her out the window. Right. And uh, you remember this story? No. Uh, in Thorny Court, across the street from, from us, the six story buildings, where Ricky lives. Mm -hmm. In his building. It's probably And hard who time. came? Who came was the, uh, the JDO. They called it the JDO organization, right? He sent me a letter. He, he did. Mordechai um, Levy sends me a letter. He, he wants me to go to training, to camp, and all those other things. Right, right, right. Would you agree with this? Become a vigilante. I don't know it's vigilante. Jewish vigilante. Jew, to, to be able to protect yourself and train. And what is this? Go to, the French, go to the French Legion for two years and come back. <laughs> no, no, it's a Jewish thing. You know, so that people know how to defend. I think that, to be honest with you, this is not the Jewish way of approaching life. The way these JDL guys, this is not really the way of Judaism. Jewish JDL. No, no, no. This is not the way. This is not the way of Judaism. Anyway, it's a different discussion. Jewish yeah. on, just don't don't look at it. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah, yeah. One of the guys they threw him off. At you know, the right? The, the, the what the Chazal say, right? When Shimon and Shimon and Levi went to kill those people, you know, right. in Shem. So Yaakov, that's what he blamed them for, right? He blamed them. You became like Esav, you know. What, you, you live with the sword? You know, that's where Jews are not supposed to live with the sword. We don't, we, we don't live by the sword. Esau lives by the sword. We live by our mouth, you know. We, we say prayers. We learn Torah. And that's what protects us. We don't need to, to be a karate and kung fu and this and judo. We don't need all this stuff, to be honest with you. And I'm not telling you, by the way, it's not allowed to do these things. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, but you're not living in that world. You're you know what I'm saying? World. Yeah, but what I'm saying is you, you, you decide what world you live in by what you, how you live your life. You know, that's your decision. So what I'm saying is that... What 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 Yaakov Avinu told the, the son Shimon Levi? You, he said, you know what he told them? He said, you stole you stole the the sword of Esav. In other words, you're taking and becoming like living by the sword, <inaudible> killing people. You know, you know that's about, not the way of Judaism. When they talk about Jesus, okay, he had a sword, okay, and he didn't use that sword for picking his toenails, okay. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm, well, I'm trying to say, Rabbi, you know I don't know what he used this for. The Jewish nation has gone to war many times. So war, like, war is one thing, but what I'm saying is, you know, you being like a, a vigilante, you know. Someone went to war against him. War that wasn't the war. That defense. wasn't the war. That was just a, it was a, it was a foolish thing to do. It was a foolish act, act of vigilantism. That's what it was. Well, to teach the people that they shouldn't be putting up with people. Right, you but out of uh, the this was a very big mistake what they did. That's what the, the, that's what the Torah teaches, right? So the thing is, Rabbi Tai, uh, if you ask me, you know, uh, for what I've seen and the, you know, I've, I've seen Baruch Hashem a lot of things in my life. I've been in the world of Torah. This is not the way of Torah. This is not the way of Judaism. You know, to be like a vigilante, you know, this kind of stuff. This is for, leave it for Esav. Esav has a sword. We have, this is our, this is our sword. The mouth is our sword. You know? Yadayim Yadei Esav, right? The, the, yeah, right. Yaakov is the mouth. You know what I mean? That's what it is. But it's up to call, each call Yaakov, Yadayim Yadei Esav. That's what it is. But it's up to each individual how to, how to take care of this. Uh, you know, I, I would say that this is not the way of Judaism, to be honest with you. This is not the way of Judaism. Don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not telling you that you cannot study karate or kung fu, you can do whatever you want. You know, don't get, don't get me wrong, but what I'm saying is that we don't live by violence. You know, that's, that's, not, how we, that's, how we, that's not how we get things done. There's a rabbi, there's a rabbi in New Jersey. His name, His name is Ben uh, Jacoby or something like this. Yeah. You know what he is? He, um, yeah, he was in the Jews for the preservation of firearms. There was there was a guy there was a guy his name his name was um, Aaron uh, Zellman who was the president and you you, you know of him and no but let's go on we have to study Torah right? we're, we're, we're here to study Torah right, we're not here to talk about these things okay so I'm sorry to interrupt you but anyway the point is over tight. That uh, getting back to what we're talking about, right? We're talking about uh, more important things, you know, not the being the uh, Mister Mister Muscle. You know, let's leave that for somebody else. That stuff, uh, Mister Muscle is not. That's not where we are. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I would uh Getting back to what we said, um, that you can be judged harshly. You can, so what what that does when you go to Simchat Torah and you dance that night, and that's why whether we go around seven times, you know, we do seven hakafot. So a person should really try, you know, to to have to get some sweat, to sweat it on that, right? That's much more powerful than uh, you know doing karate and kung fu. Believe me, it's much more. It has much more effect on your life than all these things. So uh, if a person does that, that will sweeten his judgment that he already got, and he cannot change really much anymore. He cannot really alter it much anymore. That's that's really the, and by the way, you know how far this goes. You should know. 
that the Sfardim have a custom which is called Hakafot Shniot. You know what that means? They, they do another um, series of dancing. Also when Simchat Torah goes out, when it ends, that night, right? They do another one. Right? The, the, a, a lot of communities don't do that. We, we don't do it over here. The Georgians don't do it. The Ashkenazim don't do it. Some in Israel, by the way, they do it. The Sham Ashkenazim. But in Israel, the Sfardim, you know, over there, they do a Kapochniot. And they go and dance that night when the, when the holiday goes out. They dance all night. Some of them go even until the morning. Can you imagine? They dance until the morning. You know where that is? If you go to the Yeshiva at Havat Shalom of Yaakov, uh, Yaakov Hillel. Over there, they dance till the morning. Can you imagine such a thing like that? Sweating, sweating, you know, ah, giving it all they got. Why is that? Because they know they want to sweeten the, the judgment. You know, to sweeten the, the, the judgments that they got for, the, for that year, that's the best way to do it. This is the, this is the significance of Simchat Torah, right? They say, by the way, that even though we're really, the, the basic obligation is to go around seven times on Simchat Torah, right? Seven times at night we do, and then another one in the morning. You know, something like that, right? Some people do also after Mincha, right? Uh, some people do like three times. Every place has a different custom. But the point is that uh, a person should really try to try to, to, to try to do that the best he can. These rabbinic laws or from the Torah? This is something. Uh, this custom of Simcha Torah is certainly not from the Torah. It's something which was uh, brought in, you know, later on by by the Chachamim, by the rabbis. But this is considered to be a very, very, very powerful custom, you know, something which has a lot of effect on our lives. So the Arizal, as I told you, right, his custom was like this. Even though the, the, the obligation is to do seven times, what he used to do in order to get the, the full effect of this whole thing, he would go from one shul to another, right? In other words, you know, you have in this neighborhood, like how many shuls you have? Like 20, 30 shuls over here? Right? There's a lot of shuls. So uh, he would go to each one, and they would do another seven, you know, each place. Dance more and more and more. Why? Because they want to get the full effect of this, uh, you know, to sweeten the, the judgments. So what does that mean? Right? The guy who sits there like a tree, you know, is really losing, uh, the, not getting anything from that. Uh, the whole point is to sweat it. That's what it's for. Okay, so getting back to what we said, right, uh, this is how the, uh, and then after that, by the way, once Simchat Torah goes out, that's it, you know, now, Enjoy yeah, exactly. You know, enjoy. Just you know, go through it now. Enjoy you know, live your. But by the way, there's also another thing, which is what that a person sometimes. This is what uh, Nisim I think just mentioned before. That sometimes a person didn't do tshuva in this time, but then after he did tshuva, you know, after simchat Torah he did tshuva. And so, what happens then? How does that? How does that help you now? Right. So the Talmud says that also helps you. How? The judgment was already rendered. But that also has a power to change. What does that mean? Let's say, for instance, right, they, they judged a person uh, to, that he should have a certain amount of, uh, of, uh, of money that he's going to make, a certain amount of money that he's going to lose, and so forth and so on. You know? So all these things can happen in a better way. In other words, he's been judged generally right, on these things. The numbers, you know, the, general, the general information has been judged Right, but still, the the uh, the the way that it happens, the way that it occurs, you know, in a nicer way, in a more gentle way, in a more right, uh, in a more beneficial way or less beneficial, all these things can still be altered by him doing tshuva also after uh, Simchat Torah. The general uh, the general idea stays. You cannot ma- change the whole general idea, but you can change, you know, the, the way the way it occurs. I noticed there's a yeah. pattern in every single holiday. Basically, the concept of tshuva is the most it's the main idea. So let me ask you this: How do we do tshuva? What is tshuva? What is it? What is it? Well, this is what is taught by by the Rambam. Right? There's laws of tshuva over there, right? It, it teaches. So you know, we have to maybe give a class on that one time, like how to do tshuva and so forth and so mean, on. It's the main idea. But basically, the holiday, you know? basically, the idea of tshuva is like this, right? By the way, that a person. What is tshuva, right? That you were sorry for your mistakes? Or? So it goes like this, right? Basically, before a person does tshuva, he has to do something else first. He has to sin first. You know what I mean? If he doesn't sin, there is no tshuva. <laughs> so what does that mean? The truth is, right, that the sin is also an integral part of the process. You know what I mean? In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that it's a part of the program. It's a part of the... Hashem knows that it has to be like that. That a person has to sin also in order to do tshuva. 
you know. So therefore, it's a, it's really a part of the uh, predestined, you know, kind of. Uh, it doesn't mean, by the way, it doesn't give you carte blanche to go and sin. What I'm saying is, if you did sin, you know, so then the program is, if you do tshuva, so that 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 sin now also became beneficial to you. Okay. You know what I mean? Get, you benefited from that too. An example. Yeah. Myself, I ate shrimp yesterday. Yeah. You talk about somebody else. Okay, it doesn't matter. No, I didn't, okay. I didn't, I didn't eat shrimp since my father passed away. <laughs> so, anyway, I ate shrimp hypothetically. Okay, yeah, hypothetically, okay. It's a sin. Yes. Now what? Now I want to do tshuva. What does it mean? I did okay, so basically what it means is like this. Tshuva means, number one, is that you decide, you know, that's it, I've had enough, you know? Oh, you, make a, you make a decision, change right? Yeah, that's it, I'm going to change. You know, I know that this was the wrong way to go. This was not the proper path in life. So you make a, a fundamental decision. I will now change my ways. That's number one, right? Number two is you actually have to say that, you know, verbally, you know, that I sinned, make a vidu, confession. You know, that's, a, that's a part of the Jewish religion, by the way, right? All the other religions that got this, they got it from us. You can do vidu anytime. You know? Yeah, sure. You do, we do twice a day over here. Yeah, we do exactly. That's why we do it. You can stay at home, pray alone, and say, I'm sorry for my sins. So, I'll good. explain to you how that works, right? That the truth is, the vidu is a very, very, very good thing, the confession. It's very good for us, good, good, very good for the soul. Why is it very good for the soul? Because when a person does vidu, and he really means it, you know, not just fake, you know, just hitting, that uh, doesn't mean nothing. But if he does really with his heart, so then what happens is it becomes a tzaddik now. Why? Because now he, he erased all his sins. All his sins have been erased. Now. You mean he has right? zero sins now? Maybe? He's been forgiven for everything. You know? What does that mean? Forgiven, but not forgotten. Right? This, it wasn't just forgotten. Him just forgive it. <laughs> That's something else. What does that mean? When you do tshuva, they forgive you right away. But then you need a process sometimes also to get atonement, right? That requires a certain process. But the first part is to, to say, I to decide, I will not do it, and then to, to, to confess, right? And then to regret to, that you did that. You should have regret, you know? You should think about it, contemplate it, you know? Why did I do that? It was wrong. I shouldn't have done it, so forth and so on. So then, the next stage, you know what it is? The next stage involves some, it's, that's a more difficult stage. Where the person is tested on that, right? They test you if you really did tshuva or not, right? They say, ah, let's see if he really did tshuva. Did he really mean it or he just faked it? You know, just fake, 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 getting on a chest. What are you beating on your chest for? Buh, 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 Tarzan. You know? What, what are you trying to do? Who are you trying to kill, kill right? So the Satan now tests him, right? He tells Hashem, give him a test. Let's try this, let's try that, let's try that. Let's see if he's going to go back to that. Once they see that he's not going to go back, so he's considered to be a real Baal Tshuva then, right? Then he's considered to be really, it's true, true Baal Tshuva. Somebody who's now been tested, been proven, this, might, this, they can, take, this can take for, for many years, by the way, this whole thing. Atlantis this whole test. process. I hear every yeah. single tested, issue yeah. can only be tested three times. He can be tempted, you know, tempted. Tempted, all kinds of things, temptations. So I don't know where you got this three times business, but give me a source on that. I always tell you, give me a source, everything you say. Three strikes, you're out, that's what it is. Because <laughs> I, I don't, I, I've never seen it. That's how I tell you that. So, okay. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. They say we do in the morning. Here. Uh, yes, this. yes. So I'm praying alone, and I'm too lazy to read the whole nine yards. So I think to myself, I'm yeah. sorry, if whatever we do says, I apologize and I agree right. to whatever I did in my yeah. own language, in English. Yes, 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 yes. By the way, that's, that can be the best thing of all of all things. If you do it from your heart, you know, in your own language, that yeah, can be so sometimes the best thing. The mercy is the court, or the court. I yeah. do whatever it says. They that's it. Right, 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 me. right, right, right. I don't have to stay. Yes, so yes. So basically, what we're saying he is that. that but how uh, does he know that he's, he's repented? How does he know? I agree. Whatever it says, I've been forgiven. I don't need to forgive it. But there's also that's another thing, right? There are some sins that's which are very heavy. By the way, I want, I want to tell you guys that even though, now, you know, what we just said, let's say, for things like eating shrimp and, you know, things like this, yeah. a person can get pretty much easily, you know, like, uh, uh, out of that. Yeah. It's not such a heavy sin that a person cannot escape from there. But there are certain things which are more heavy sins, which a person needs, like, uh, also to, to atone for that. What does that mean? He needs, uh, it's not enough just for Day of Atonement, right? Yom Kippur is not enough to atone for that. So he needs to suffer a lot, you know, like throughout his whole life. They give him like series of sufferings, you know, all kinds of... 
he gets sick, he gets this, all kinds of things, you know, he gets a fever, he gets uh, all kinds of, you know, minor, whatever, whatever minor, it is, all kinds that's of things. That's a minor thing. <laughs> so that's a minor thing. Right, yeah, 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 right. It's, 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 it's not minor, but yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively, right, well, relatively. Yeah. You to eat shrimp. Well, no, 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 I eat uh, lobster instead. So where? <laughs> so, so okay. we'll switch, we'll switch okay. back and forth, and then pork rice, you know. But anyway, so, okay. uh, 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 what was I going to say? Um... I forgot, go ahead. Okay, so if you remember, sin. we're still here. Sins. If you remember, we're still here. There are minor sins and major sins. So I want to tell you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, the major sins would be like adultery or... Ah, oh, now we're, now we're talking, now we're talking. Okay, yeah, yeah. Major, Those things, things like this. Things that go against the what is that? Yes, 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 yes. Meaning what? The things which are isur karet or isur skila, you know, what does that mean? Either he's That's liable to being cutting off, cut off from Jewish people because he did the sin, or he's liable to death for these things. So these major sins... Even though, you know, David always talks about this, right? We don't have a death penalty today. That's true, but even though we don't have it, right? But a person, because these sins are very heavy, so if a person does teshuvah on these sins, he needs a lot of atonement for that. You know, a lot of, because lot of, uh, the soul has been damaged very greatly on, by these things, right? So what, what, are these, what are these sins that damage the soul very greatly? We're talking about avodah you know, uh, idolatry. You know, it's very heavy. And by the way, that's why a person has to be very careful. You know, people think, oh, you know, I, I read this Bible, their Bible, you know, this and that, uh, these Quran, Shmoran, Joran, you know, all these things. You're not allowed to read these things. This is heresy. This is idolatry, these things. You know, people think, oh, you know, I'm just reading it. It's literature. You know, what literature? What literature? You know? it, it can pull your heart into that stuff, you know? It's very dangerous, this kind of stuff. And then you can start to believe in that, you know? It's the next thing. Before, you know, you, next thing you know, you're like bowing down, you know, and like you're thinking, oh, you know, all kinds of emotional things about that. How did you get? How did you get to that point? Because you, you were studying these things, you know, and talking, you know, thinking about contemplating, thinking concentrating on that, you know, meditating on these things. It's very dangerous. It's a very dangerous thing. And by the way, this is the reason why it's such a big uh, prohibition to go into a church, mm -hmm. because the church over there, when you go in, it has a power over there of evil, uh, tuma, you know, of impurity. So that affects you, you know. It has an effect on you. Uh, and uh, you, you know, yeah. When you go into a, church, you go into a church where they pray over there, you know, the place where they pray, you don't feel what? You feel uh, there's an impurity that attaches to you, and you, you can get damaged by that, very damaged. I've been you know. inside a church. You, you don't feel it? Feel so, like bad? It's like a, it's like an element. I feel like drinking the holy water. <laughs> it sucks. It's hard to explain. Like burn, and I know the devil's in there. Plenty of churches being there. I mean, right. Person, by the way, there are some people who don't even realize what that effect is. You know, they're, they're not so sensitive yeah. about that yet. Right. My mother sensitive. told me you know? I'm not supposed to go. They're not to sensitized. Church. Exactly. Oh, God bless her. God bless her. Next door church. I feel. I feel already. Like, well, you train. Hate it. You hate it. So no, all hate, these things. No, I don't hate nobody. You don't like the question. By the way, I must tell you that this is also a very dangerous hate. thing. You know how dangerous this is to to get into Abu to idolatry. It's it's so dangerous that it can kill a person. It can you can die from that. We may have a heart attack. Yeah, you can die. Yeah, it can it can kill him. You know why that is? By the way, you should know that uh, the reason is is because um, if he decides to do chuva after he went got into idolatry, right, and he wants to come back to Judaism now, right. They say sometimes he can die because of that. You know why? Because that comfort that he was getting from having that false, you know, comfort of thinking, oh, my sins are forgiven, you know, this guy, this loser died, you know, and now they forgave me for everything. You know, that comfort that he got from that, that, that false belief that he had, gave him a comfort in life. Now because he lost that comfort, that can kill him. You understand? That's a very like dangerous it. thing. You like it. <laughs> is that the temptation from the devil? What's after Buddha What's What's after Buddha Zara? You know it used to be at one point that the Buddha Zara... So the these things are, are very, very dangerous. I must tell you guys, it's very dangerous. Uh, on the this, same this level as well, you're going to no? be persuaded. I'm not going to be persuaded. Listen, I'm not very religious, but I, I'll tell you. Idolatry is a someone, very dangerous thing. If somebody... Well, adultery is one thing. You idolatry, know, idolatry, you, idolatry, idolatry. Yeah, well, you can always get a korva too. Is that just as bad? So, uh, as I said, Rabotai, this is one of the things that a person has to be very careful about. This, can, this, can, this is a killer. It's a killer, this thing. Be careful. Heresy, idolatry is a killer. Number two. Idolatry yeah. for, for us, yeah. for them, is comfort, and that's the way they Don't decide. worry about them. You have to worry about yourself. Then they'll, they'll, they'll go to hell. Let them, let them, don't worry about that. That's, 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 their, that's their problem. You know what I'm saying? You have to worry about your own Deshama. You have to worry about your own soul, right? So, that, that's one thing, right? Number one. Number two is also breaking Shabbat, right? Which is also, you know, very, very, very big sin. He's liable to death on that. 
Libel, oh, cut. Okay. he's cut off from the Jewish people. Very big, very big sin. You know, this is not a joke, you know what I'm saying? This is not just, uh, you know, we talked about these things, right? But if a person really breaks Shabbat, you know, literally breaks Shabbat, does something, you know, this is like, he gets cut off from the Jewish people, becomes like a goy. You know, this is a very dangerous thing. He needs to do tshuva, it's a very, dangerous, very dangerous. So these things, or as you said, right, adultery also, very dangerous. This A person who commits adultery, he, he, he has a very, very big sin. And he has to, he needs a big uh, tshuva on that. Very big, very big, very big. It's a very, very, very big sin. This is one of the Ten Commandments, as you know, right? This is one of the Ten Commandments. So these things are all tied. Also, you know, homosexuality, same thing. Not allowed. You know, it's a very, very, very big sin. A person has to be very careful about these things. All these sins, right? In other words, the promiscuity, you know? Yes. Incest, uh, homosexuality, adultery, oh, all these yeah, things, you know? You these know, things yeah. are very, very big sins. And also, by the way, it's going with a goya, with a shiksa, you know? Very dangerous. Yeah. This is a very dangerous thing. A person who goes with a goya, steady, you know, yeah. gets cut off from the Jewish people. Get married. What gets cut get off. Married? What if they get married? By the way, they say, you know, that this sin of going with a goya, you know how dangerous it is? That a person, who, everybody, you know, as we said, right, but they all have a portion in the world to come. Except this guy, right, who goes with a goya. Yeah, why is that? Like, she could light the candles on, she, she could put the line on though. <laughs> <laughs> so you know why that is? They say, right, that if a person goes to Gainam, he goes to, you know, purgatory, hell, you know, whatever. He goes over there, Gainam. So people go there for their sins. They say, right, that when Yitzhak Abin was going to go and pull everybody out, all the Jews who are there. But there's only one he cannot pull out, the one who was going with the Goya. You know? That he cannot pull out, this one. You know why? You can't identify him. It's not identifiable. Why? Because the Brit Milah that he had gets pushed back on him, you know? It's like he's not circumcised. He's considered to be like not circumcised. Becomes like a goy, you know. He goes back to being a goy. Meanwhile, it's only temporary. If he does chuva, he can come back. Obviously, you know, I'm not talking about that. But I'm saying, as long as he's going with a goya, if he didn't do chuva, he's living like a goy. Shem He's living like a like a gentile, you know. So these things get, take a person out of Judaism, totally out of Judaism. They get totally removed. The, the, all these sins that we mentioned now, right? So these are the things that a person has to do very has to be very, very careful about, you know, to do chuva from these things. But all I'm telling you is like this, right? Let's say a person, now, you know, we talked about some lighter things, you know, which are like, let's say a person did, didn't put filling one day, you know. One day, he missed filling, right? So there, the Talmud says, if you didn't put filling one day, so you can just do chuva and you, they forgive you on the spot, you know. But these things, it's not like that. They forgive you, but they don't forget. What does that mean? You got to go through suffering, right? Atonement, you need atonement. This atonement goes on for all your life. By the way, you should know. You want to know a secret about this? What's the secret? Not a lot of people know this, by the way. Don't if a me. person did one of these sins, right? So now he's going to be suffering in his life a lot because of it, even if he did tshuva. So how do you how do you prevent that? How do you escape? Right? There, you know, is there an avenue of escape you can get out? Well, that's the question, right? So I was taught my bad Rebbe. What's sin are we doing now? I'm sorry? What sin are we doing that we got to get away from? We're talking about any of these sins that we just mentioned, right? Any of those, right? Okay. This, this variety, right? Garden variety of sins, right? Okay, so yeah. So we, we said, right, that a person, if he wants to get out of suffering from when he did these sins, you know how he does it? By studying Torah. As long as he's learning Torah, they don't judge him at that time. As long as he's studying, he's not judged at all. Can you imagine? The power of Torah is so great. This is what Moreno Rabbeinu told us. Rabbi Yosef, This is written also, and there are sources for this. I saw somewhere it's written that this thing also. But so if he goes yeah. to Cheder, he's okay. But if he doesn't go to Cheder, he's okay. He doesn't have to be in Cheder. He can also be learning in his house. doesn't make any difference where he is, right? He can be learning on the internet. He can be learning on, the, on, his, on his telephone, right? Whatever it is. You know, there's all kinds of uh, ways to learn Torah, Baruch Hashem, now. They have also, you know, these tapes, as we said, yeah, the CDs and all these things. So anyway, any, any, of, this, any of these things, a person is learning Torah, he gets saved from the suffering. But otherwise, he's, he's judged for suffering, you know, for a long, long time. So it's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult, all these things. What can you do? There's, there's no way to escape from these things. There's no... Yeah, we do the lessons every day. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> We'll talk, you know, it's you, it's always you that increases the, the, I'll be the, no the, the frequency, the Jimmy, okay. So, you know, I guess you will be going, you're doing your, doing your job as usual. So, <laughs> give to Sadaka and you're okay. No. Uh, Sadaka is also very good. Yeah, it's also very good. Sadaka is, a, by the way, they say that Sadaka, you know, the power of Sadaka is very, very great. They say that it's second to learning Torah. Not as strong as learning Torah, but it's second, in second place. Uh, somebody learns Torah. Yeah? How, how long do they protect him? 
as long as he's learning at that time that he's learning. Not after. Once he finishes, he's off. That's it. He's off the the cord. The cord is plugged out. So now we're protected. <laughs> we're protected. We're wrong, we are not protected. At, unless you're listening to there's Mr. No uh, no Ruben, 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 you're, you're listening to Ruben over there. There's no residue. There's no residue. Huh? There's no residue. What does that mean, residue? So you study Torah, you have residue. Yeah. I, I didn't understand what you It was Kedusha. But for this purpose, you're right, there is for sure. But for this purpose, the suffering doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. So a person suffers so, the rest of his life for being promiscuous with God. By the way, you should know... Uh, he needs. He needs a, 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 for for going with the goya. It's not all his life. I, it's not. It's not. It's not. But he, you know, according to according to Mikubalim, he needs to like fast eighty days. You know, to atone for for this he sin. You know, but since he cannot fast eighty days, most people don't do that. So they're gonna judge him with all kinds of things. You know, until you know everything is uh, cleaned up. It's gonna take a few years, maybe. You know, a couple, uh, several years. One little mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, smart. it's very, very dangerous, these things. So anyway, the point is about Tide, that uh, all these things, a uh, person has to understand, contemplate all these things. If, if you want to if you want to exempt yourself from all the problems, just, by the way, this is also what the Zohar HaKadosh says. Zohar HaKadosh says that, you know, regarding the Torah, it says, right, Etz HaChaynei LeMachazikim Ba. You know what that means? It's a tree of life. You know, do you see that tree? Right, it's a chaim. Right, uh, see that tree over there? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that it's a chaim when it, when it, when it, when the when the pasuk when the verse says it's a chaim like it says over there. What is it referring to? It's referring to the Torah. It's a tree of life. So it says it's Torah kadosh. What does that mean, tree of life? How is the Torah a tree of life? When you're learning Torah, you're connected to life. When you stop learning Torah, you get disconnected, you know, like you're pulling out the cord, you know? <laughs> you're out, you're, you're not connected, not connected to life. You understand? So, you see how precious the Torah is, by the way. That it's, it's, it's life, the Torah is life, you know, life is Torah. If I'm so, contemplating uh, ideas of Torah in my mind at any point in my life, I'm studying Torah. Yeah, if you're thinking about it when you're going on the, on the road, you're right, that's, that's also, yeah, same thing, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Like he does within his car, you know, with the, with the rabbi. Play the, play the tapes on the English car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's the way it is, Uh All these things, a person has to be very, very careful. Okay, so I guess we understand more or less, right, uh, about these things that we mentioned. So I just want to mention also a couple of things about preparing for Yom Kippur, right? Uh, because the first thing, right, it's that what? By the way... Th- in, here also we find that the Torah has a lot of mercies on people also, right? There's a lot of mercy there. Even though Yom Kippur is really like a tough day, you know, because you've got to fast and you can't do all these pleasures and you're, you know, you're restricted from everything, more or less. More or less, just about anything you can, you can put your name on, right, on your hand on. Except one thing, by the way, on Yom Kippur there's one pleasure you're allowed to do, you know, to smell something nice that you're allowed to do on Yom Kippur. To smell a good flower, good perfume, you know, something, a nice scent, you know, and you can make a blessing also, Yom right? Yom Yom Tov. Huh? Yom Tov. It's like Shabbat, really, right? It's higher than Yom Tov. It's higher than Yom Tov. It's lower smoke. than Shabbat, but higher than Yom Tov. It's right in the middle of Shabbat and Yom Tov. You can't smoke. Oh, it's like Shabbat. It's like Shabbat, right? What's the difference between, by the way, why is Shabbat more severe than Yom Kippur? You know why? Most people think that Yom Kippur is more severe than Shabbat, right? Most people are not religious. And this is a mistake, by the way. This is not true. Shabbat is more severe than Yom Kippur. What does that mean? That a person who breaks Shabbat is much worse than breaking Yom Kippur. And you know what the funny thing is, right? You know the funny things, right? Last year when we were here, uh, in the shul, so one of the workers over here, right? One of our friends over here, good guy. So what he does, what he comes to me and he says, you know what, he says, a rabbi, he says, you know, should I take out that, uh, that they have like a little uh, stand over there where they put money in, you know, for tzedakah? One on this side, one on the other side, right? Two, two sides, right? They have that, you notice, right? So he asked me, he says, should I remove these from Yom Kippur? Like, you know, there should be no money here on Yom Kippur, you know. So I asked him a question. I said, let me ask you a question. On Shabbat, do you remove them? You know? So he says, no. He says, why do you want to remove it from Yom Kippur? Because <laughs> he thinks that Yom Kippur, you know, is like, you know, much more holy. It's not true. The Shabbat is more holy. It's well, not, it's not, it's money, not really true. Shabbat. Into the tambourine, what you do is you take the piece of paper, put yeah. your name on it, and make the promise to pay later. <laughs> I owe you. I got it. You want? I owe you. Okay. Well, that's what they do, right? They they take the paper and they, they promise. To okay. Get okay. Home. So anyway, we're going to tie. What that means is that Yom, what's the difference between Yom Kippur and Shabbat? Shabbat, if there was a court, they would stone him, right, for breaking Shabbat. 
But on Yom Kippur, they don't stone you, it's just you get cut off, right? There's no stoning. There's no, there's no, that's the, the severity of Shabbat is greater than the severity of Yom Kippur, it's punishment. By the way, we also see that in a different place. On Shabbat, how many people go out for the Torah? Seven. Seven. But Yom Kippur, only six, right? So you see, why is that? Because it's a little bit more. So because of that, a little bit less. So Yom, Yom Tov, how many? Five. Right? So it's a little bit lower than Yom Kippur. So Cholom Oed, how many go up? Four. Right? So that's also lower, right? So each, you know, each, the, the, it goes down, you know, gradually, right? It's a gradient. Right? So that's the way it is. So but anyway, getting back to what we said, that the Torah is a very merciful thing, right? Why, why is it so merciful? It's something very strange, by the way. The Pasuk says, right? There's two places where it talks about Yom Kippur. One says we have to fast on the 10th of the month of Tishrei, right? Which is going to be this year, it's going to be on Wednesday. Tuesday night, Wednesday, right? That's, that's what it is. But there's another verse that says, there's no, you have to fast on the 9th. Right? That would be Monday night, Tuesday. <laughs> So what? They want you what they want us to fast two days? What does that mean? What's, what's the story with it? Right? Who's gonna fast two days? Right? So the Gemara says, right, about that. Why does it tell us to fast two days? You know why? Because it's telling you that if you eat on the ninth, have a nice a few nice good meals, it's they give you credit like you fasted for two days. Can you imagine? They give you credit for fasting for two days just because you ate good on that day, had a nice festive meals, you know? Nice breakfast, fancy breakfast, fancy lunch, fancy dinner, right, right before the sun goes down. Everything, right, you finished early, right, uh, on time, everything. So if you had like that, they give you credit like you fasted two days. So this is an amazing thing, right? So what, what does that mean? They're, give, they're giving you credit for eating, just like they give you credit for fasting, right? It's an amazing thing. What, what other place are you going to find something like that, right? They get such a nice, a nice, a nice discount like that. What are the Muslims doing their holiday? They, they fast, eat Ramadan? And they eat and fast, eat and fast. They have deal, they have deal. Right. But you know what the difference is? They decide to do that on their own. We're commanded to do these things. You understand? That's something else. By the way, when a person d- decides to fast on his own, he gets credit for that too, you know, if he, may, if he has good intentions. Yeah. But when you're commanded, you get more credit. You know, that's the, you know what I mean? Every, every holiday, yeah. Yeah. Every, every religion has a fast day. Right, but they're not commanded. The Torah didn't command them. You know, this is they made up. It's a fake religion. It's a fake. You got fake fake news, right? So that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing is like as we said, right? This is the number one preparation. Eat good on the day before. You know what I mean? This is the most important thing. You know, in a sense, because you got to prepare to fast. You know, you got the strength. You're gonna be here seeing, praying all day. You know, it's very hard. It is. You know, it takes all your energies, you know, it's like, you know, your body can get depleted the very easily, I'm sorry. What's the best Torah to study in Yom Kippur? The Torah? What's the best portion of Torah to study? Oh. Zohar, Tehillim, uh, Gimarot. Well, I tell you, what I do is I, I just do my regular daily schedule. Right. You know, I don't I don't change anything. No. <laughs> That's why. I even finish the Tehillim twice, it, it's like Kapara. There's all kinds of nice customs, you know, this, they finish this, they finish that. All kinds of nice things to do. You know? I'm saying, I personally do... Just, I go on my own regular schedule. I don't change nothing. What can I tell you? Now, what, what about your medicines and stuff like that? Oh, medicines. So now you have, yeah. this is part of the religion that you could break because you yeah. need. Yeah, regarding medicines, by the way, anybody, anybody have, this, have this issue? Uh, I, yeah, I, have, I take medicines. What, what kind of, uh, can I ask you? I'm sorry. Oh, I take, I, well, Wednesday is not a problem because that's one day that I don't take the medicine. I okay. Take one day, <laughs> but... I do take a daily medicine. What what is it for? Synthroid. What is that for? For thyroid. Thyroid. The hormone issue. Thyroxin. So uh, what does that do? I have no thyroid. So do you need something to regulate the body, yeah. If you would if you would skip it if you would skip it for one day, what would happen? Uh, well I if you skip it for twenty four hours, let's say. Well right? I do skip it for twenty four hours and I take it uh, six days a week. Right. So can you skip it Wednesday? Can you skip it Tuesday night, Wednesday? You can do that? I, I will. Yeah, I could. I could. I could arrange that. But the thing is, yeah. you know, I take other medicine also for my neuropathy. What does that mean? Uh, I get pain in the feet. Pain you know, from the sugar. Pain treatment. Yeah. Pain, yeah. You know. So, so the yeah. rule is like this. Regarding, but this is a very important question, by the way. Right? Yeah. It needs to be discussed, you know, thoroughly, especially well, when somebody. I understand yeah. that if you're sick. Yeah. Okay. That you can do these things. Not not. You're not here to, not to start to go eat pork or something. Not to go. You know what. What, what I'm saying is, if you need the medicine, you have to take the medicine. Absolutely, you absolutely. Take, it, absolutely. You take a sip of water. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the way it works is like this, right? The, first of all, a person has to know that uh, really uh, taking medicine which has no taste, you know, just a tasteless tablet or capsule or whatever, yes. there's really, that's, not, that's not called eating. 
Okay. That's not cold eating. Okay. You know, just you're just ingesting it. You know, like the lights. Okay. Just right. popping it into your stomach. You know, you don't get you don't get a benefit from that. You don't get any t pleasure from that. Right. It has no taste. But if you need it to live, that's what it is. So what I'm telling you is that something which is is not pleasurable at all has no taste, right? Mm -hmm. And a person needs to take that, so he's allowed to. Okay. Yeah. That's, there's no all there's right. no problem problem about that, right? So I don't, I don't have to uh, ask for forgiveness. Uh, depends how much he needs that aspirin, right? You know. The, 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 the truth is, you know that it's not called eating when you take an aspirin. We don't call that eating at all. If you have a migraine headache, you're going to take something because you're not going to suffer. So what I'm telling you is like this, right? Taking a pill, which is tasteless, is like same thing, the same as taking it on Shabbat. Okay. Same idea, on Yom Kippur and Shabbat, same thing. What does that mean? On Shabbat also, you're not allowed to take something, a medicine, which you don't need. You know, something which is not really necessary. Like if you can skip, you if you can need. skip 24 hours, let's say, right? And it's not going to do anything to you. So it's better not to take. But if you really, if it's something that you really need, so you're allowed to take it, you know, sure. on Shabbat. Yeah, so same thing on Yom Kippur, same, same idea. Except one thing, right? That what? That on Yom Kippur, there's one, there's one difference on Shabbat. On Yom Kippur, if it has a good taste, that, that type capsule, right? Whatever, has sugar coated. You know, so then you gotta watch out. So what do you do? If it's a sugar coated tablet, right? Or capsule, whatever. So what you do is you wrap it into, in like cellophane. Yeah. And this way you swallow it with no taste. What if you you're allowed to do that? Your yeah. No, it's like, uh, like, yeah. like chewable vitamin C. Or something like that. Well, yeah. What if you put it behind the taste bus? Huh? Behind the tongue and you swallow it. It's very hard to do that, to be honest with you. I, I, I personally have tried that, but you know what it is? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I tried it. I, I read your mind. I read your mind. Tastes like crap. To be honest with you, you, you should know that the taste buds are also on the back of the tongue as well. No, That's so what about, people don't really realize that. Like you put it down the throat. So this is not really a solution. What the poskim say is that you should wrap it in cellophane and swallow it like that. Then you're, but then you're eating plastic. A little bit. No, 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 it's, it's, okay. it's, the stomach acid will b b burn it. Don't worry. Nothing, nothing yeah, yeah, will happen. What about bubbles coming out? What if the medicine requires <laughs> eating or drinking? Huh? Right. So same thing over there, right? Oh, you're talking about eating mamash, like something you with a good to taste. Eat something. Yeah. So if it's something which has a good taste, so as we said, right, the, the solution is to, to wrap it up in, in, in something, right? So or taste it. or to wrap it in cellophane. If somebody you know, needs to or, eat some you know, food. They cannot take the medicine on an empty stomach. I'm sorry, what was that again? Old people, for example, take yeah. sugar medication and whatnot. Right. Yes, 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 yes. They have to eat something before taking the medication. Yes, Otherwise, they have it has to an eat. issue. Right, right. So a person like that who has, who, who the doctor tells them like this, and the doctor tells them, listen, you have to take this every day, and if you don't, you're, you're going to get, you or not sick. die, but that you're gonna, you could deteriorate, you know, and things like that. So this, these things we do allow, you know, but there are ways to do these things, by the way. But what does that mean? That if a person needs to eat something, according to the doctor's orders, so what we do is we give him like little by little, you know, that he shouldn't eat like a big amount in one shot. Because if he eats a big amount, he's like, uh, you know, he's cut off because it's like cutting off. So therefore, right, person who needs to eat or drink, the doctor tells him, listen, you must eat and drink on Yom Kippur. The doctor says, you cannot do that. So what we do is like this, right? We give him small amounts every, every few minutes, right? Every 10 minutes, we give him like a small amount, like let's say... Uh, a tablespoon, whatever, you know? You know? To eat smaller amounts. Yeah, smaller right. amounts, exactly. So if you do that, you're okay. You know why? Because if you drink less than a certain amount or eat at a certain, less than a certain amount, right? how much is that, by the way? It's about, um, you know, kotebet. That's what they say in Yom Kippur. You know what's kotebet? Kotebet is like a, uh, it's, it's a date. It's the size of a date. Okay. It's bigger than an olive and smaller than an egg. Okay. So something like that, right? That's the size on Yom Kippur that makes you liable to, to cutting off. So therefore, if a person needs to eat, and he can, he can, he can be satisfied by eating a little bit, little by little. So every ten minutes, we give him a little dose, and we keep him like that, right? That's all. But if a doctor says he needs to eat more than that, so he can eat them more than that too. You eat less than a any human being on Yom Kippur, Jew. Yeah. That's the issue. That's what we said, right? That he's cut off on you, it. Yeah. What about that? What if we eat a kazaid of food? So he's 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 over on a prohibition, but he's not liable to cutting off. You understand? It's allowable. It's not allowable, but they it's eat. definitely he sinned. He sinned, but he's not cut off. They're two different things, right? Two different, two different levels. That's what well, that it is. That can make somebody, believe, you know, think like, you know, what do I do? Do I, do I, so, do I go to the Torah or do I die? <laughs> no, there's no. You don't have to. There's no dilemma like that, right? No, we always, no. we all, right? As, that's what the Torah says, right? Always The Torah said you should live by them, right? What does that mean? The Torah wants you to live, not to die, right? right. So don't. Don't uh, break, break uh, you know, don't uh, fast. And by the way, I want to give, give a, 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 a very strong example of this. This is a real story, right? He told us this story. 
he himself saw this, right? What happened was that he was a, when he was a young man, he was a rabbi in a certain uh, synagogue, you know, Bukharian synagogue, in the, in the Bukharian quarter, in Jerusalem, right? Yeah. He was studying there, you know. He was they had a nice library there, you know. They had a nice library, so he was studying there. And what happened was that there was one guy who was like the president of the shul, you know, Gabai or whatever, something like that, you know. What are these guys, right? So you know uh, what happened was that uh, he the, he had a heart condition. This guy. So he, the doctor told him, "You cannot fast on Yom Kippur. Not allowed. You you may get into danger." So he comes to Rav Vadia, right? And he tells him, he says, "You know what?" He said, "The doctor told me, I, I know I cannot fast on Yom Kippur." He said, "I'm not going to listen to him. What do you think? I'm going to I'm going to sin on like that? Make do a sin like that? And eat on Yom Kippur? I He says, "I'm not going to do that." So the rabbi told him, he says, no, you're mistaken. He says, when a doctor tells you, you have to eat. Right. And if you don't, your life is in your hands and it's going to, you're going to be blamed on that. Suicide. So what happened? That's another sin. Right? Suicide, if you die. Shem Achem, true story, right? So what happened? That Yom Kippur, this guy decided to be a hero, right? Mr. Hero. Right? What happened? He got a heart attack and died. You know? Is that, that, that? Wow. Plus he went against the right of the saints. Exactly. He killed himself, he did, you know, so it's all the sin, there's no mitzvah there, there's no mitzvah to be like that, there's no, uh, to be a hero like that, it's foolish, that's what it is, you know, it's foolish of you becoming a fool, you being a sinner, that's what it is, you know, so these things, a person has to contemplate these things, right, everything has to be done in the proper measure, okay, about time. let's go a little bit further, uh, we have a lot of things to cover, but whatever, we'll do whatever we can. Seven times to eat. Seven, because I heard that you got to say, There's no shrimp. Seven times. Oh, you mean, uh, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, very nice. You know what it is? This is what he's saying, Jimmy. It's according to the Kabbalah. According to the Kabbalah, a person should have on the, the day before Yom Kippur, seven meals. I can have That's it. what it says, right? Oh, really? And by the way, this is not an obligation. It's a chasidut, you know? I can eat it. To be right. honest with you, if you're going to do this, you're going to be eating every two hours and it's going to be very hard, you know, to fulfill this. So don't make yourself crazy, you know? Yeah. God bless, you know, God bless. I can eat it, I can eat two kazai, bread, and then I can say, break at the do it over and over seven times. You can, but you shouldn't do it just like just to make extra brachot, you know, that, that you shouldn't do. What it means is, you know, take a break a little bit, you know, and not just, you know, to stop and start, stop and start. Three meals. You woke up? You three, is, three is very good. Three is perfect. I'm Jimmy. complicating. Perfect. You're asking questions within, within questions. Well, that's the idea. Are you really going to eat seven times? Right? No, I'm not, that's what I'm asking. No, they no, say, no, by no, the way, David, no, be told you, no. they say, by the way, that every Jew, you know, is unique. You know why? Because they have their own ideas. They have their own opinions. So what does that mean? You have to respect, you know, every Jew's, you know, approach to uh, to Judaism. You have to hear them out, you know, you have to, you have to give them respect. If he's really <laughs> doing seven times, I'm not, though. Then it's something else. I think Jimmy is, he says seven times. I don't think Jimmy's going to attempt to eat seven times. So lots of tales. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi, did you, else, Rabbi, did you Rabbi, ever taste that? Okay. Rabbi? So, Rabotai, also I want to talk to you about something else, right? Which is kaparot. <coughs> right? The custom is to do kaparot before Yom Kippur. What does that mean? We take those chickens, right? We wave them over our head. Ze khalifati, ze kaparati, ze temurati. Right, three times. Pa, 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 chicken. Pa, 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 live chicken. Right, it's going like this, right? So, the truth is, right, regarding this, this, uh, this custom, I want to first tell you the reason, right? What's the reason why? Because we, what we're saying is like this, right? That we really deserve to die from our sins, but the chicken should go instead of us, right? It should be in our stead. So, you know? He took it. Instead of me, he's going, right? Instead of me, he's going to go. But isn't it a problem for that? We cannot do blood sacrifice outside of the mishpah. That's exactly the point. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to tell you about that. That's exactly the point. So, what I'm saying is saying like that, right? This custom is very, very widespread, by the way, in the Jewish people. Very widespread. The Georgians do it, the Bukharians do it, the Ashkenazim do it. Everybody does it. It's a little bit gypsy style. Yeah, okay, I hear that, I, I hear that, so. I hear that. So the sounds point like, is, right? Sounds like the Santa Maria's with the But if you look in the Shulchan Aruch, though, right? Uh, in interesting, right? Maran Shulchan Aruch says that this is a very bad custom to do, actually, you know? Very bad. So the question is, what happened, right? Why all of a sudden we're doing all against Shulchan Aruch, all of us? What's the story, right? What, what's, the, what's the idea? So the truth is, right, that the Maran, who wrote the Shulchan Ruch, Maran Bet Yosef, he went according to Ramban. Ramban writes that this is like idolatrous custom, this thing, right, to do, do this chicken thing, you know? 
a motion to play that, right? So he says, right, it's really the ways of the idolaters, and therefore a person should not do it. So what should he do? Use money instead, right? Take money, wave it over your head, zechalifati, zechaprati, zetemurati, three times, right, and then give it to, uh, right, so-so? <laughs> give it to Mr. Soso over there. <laughs> right, whatever, you know. The truth is that uh, a person should uh, give it to yeshiva, right, or a kolel, if not, the Knesset, right, a shul, whatever, something like that, right. Torah always comes first, by the way, when it comes to these things. Torah institutions come before everything else. That's, that's usually the, the way it is, right? Torah is first. Well, I'm sorry, you have to give yeah. something before you give Kiru? Ah... Uh, so you, you're talking about real Tamit Chacham, right? As, as opposed to some uh, a rabbi who does Kiruv, right? That's what right. you're saying, right? Good question what he's asking, right? What he's asking, I'll, I'll explain to you the, the question. Only he knows this, what, he, what this means. You guys don't understand this. So I have to explain to you. So what he's trying to say is like this, right? That there's different types of rabbis. We have all kinds of rabbis. We have this kind of rabbi, Mr. Wex, Y, Mr. X, Y. Every, everybody rabbi has, every rabbi has a different role in this world. By the way, in the old days, it wasn't like that, you should know. Listen, listen. In the old days, one rabbi knew how to do everything, you know? He was like a jack of all trades. He does shita, he shechs the animals, you know? He writes Sefer Torah, he writes Tfilin, he reads the Torah, he gives a drasha, he gives a sh- he lectures, you know? He was doing everything. He was doing Brit Milah, everybody who reads the Torah, right? We had one rabbi who gives lectures, you know, things like, you know, everybody has this, this his own... Uh, one has his own little uh, corner, right? So, why am I telling you this? Is that uh, he's at, this question is like this, right? Which rabbi is superior? Right? There's one rabbi who does kiruv. What does that mean? That he gives lectures, you know, to people who are not religious to make them, you know, like to convince them that God is real, Torah is real, you know, to tell them to, you know, to, to, to believe in God, to believe in the, in the Torah, right? He's like one of these like people who are, you know, to bring to bring people to do tshuva. You know, yeah, yeah, something Not like that, whatever. Sure. Okay, this is a different word, but same idea. Anyway, the point is that a rabbi like this, that's that, that, that kind of rabbi, but we have people like, like this in our generation also. You know, we have rabbi, and, and right, uh, this, you know, yeah, we have this guy, a reverend. we have this where they study halakha, it's considered to be the most important thing, right? Meaning what? You should, you should, you should always prefer to give your money to a, a, a yeshiva, a whole kolel, studying over the halakha. Why is that? Because since this is the most deep and profound and important and influential part of the Torah, so a person should, should, uh, uh, should prefer this field over all the other fields. There's also another thing, right? That we mentioned, you know, here several times, that there's all kinds of rules, right? Tamit Chacham, this, you not to do this, Tamit Chacham, can't do Tamit Chacham, this, all these things, right? They're, they're exempt from taxes, there are all kinds of rules like this, right? You have to give them respect, you know, to, you know all, these, all these things. All these things basically are taught, and you have to also stand up, by the way, when you walk in the door, or in the room, right? You get, when the Tamil Chacham walks into the room, you got to stand up, you have to give him kabod, and right? all these things. Who does this apply to, by the way? Which kind of rabbi does this apply to? It only applies to a rabbi. Oh, but no, we, have, we give respect to everybody, Baruch Hashem, you know, don't get me wrong. We, give, we, we respect everybody. But when it comes to rules of Tamil Chacham, it's only about this, this particular right, uh, per, per person like that. By the way, the Chazonish even says something even stronger than that, you should know. So he says something really shocking about that, Chazonish. He writes to Chazonish that if you have a rabbi, right? He's a t- yeshiva, you know, very scholar. Yeah? <coughs> he, he's very strong in Talmud, you know, learns, learns Gemara. He learns Musar, right? The uh, ethical works, you know, Musar books. But he doesn't know Halakha. Right? Halakha is like, because you know why? Even though the Talmud and the Halakha are really one, what does that mean? The Halakha comes from the Talmud. You know what I mean? You can't learn halakha without knowing the Talmud. So what does that mean? He knows Talmud, but he doesn't know halakha. What that means is, he knows... Uh, let's see what else we can cover. We don't have much time. I wonder what the Torah would say about the Supreme Court. So Rabbi I think, by the way, the, the, the Goim are commanded to have courts, you know? So it's very actually a good thing that we have courts over here. Otherwise, they, they would eat each other. There will be anarchy. No, but so, that's anything, a, hmm? you know, abortion is allowed by the Supreme Court. Yes, you, you know yes, yes, saying? yes, by, yes. By any, by any religion, actually, the yeah. three main religions, it's considered manslaughter. It's considered... What can you do? You know, this is a big, big discussion. It's a big issue. You know? Wait a second, Rabbi. Yeah. I heard you say that before. That the, 
Yes, it's a big discussion, but it's not a discussion in, 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 the, in, the, in the Torah. It certainly is. It certainly is. The size of a seed, right? It's, a definition. it's like a shish kebab that you eat on the barbecue. That's what it looks like. You understand? So, no, no, what, does that, what does that mean? You know? It's a definition of when life starts. When exactly. Right. This is according, the to according to the Torah, by the way, the yeah. neshama comes after forty days. He was going to say that, right? No, I can't say it. It comes. So it comes. Before forty days, you can. Uh, right, exactly. So, meaning what? Before forty days, there is some well, wait, leeway yes, he didn't to. Say you yeah. Could There's a discussion like yeah. any other discussion. No, there are certain cases that we do permit it before forty days. You know why? Because since the neshama is not there, you cannot call that murder. It's just a piece of meat. Basically, you know, until the yeah. until the soul comes there, it's, it's just it's just it's just a piece of flesh. The tree. What's the answer? The answer is like this, right? The truth is that it really is a very similar thing. What you're saying, it's really similar one to the other, and that's exactly the reason why we don't allow abortion in every case. There's only certain cases where we allow it, where there are extreme cases. Even as we said, right? There was a rape, right? Exactly. Before forty, days. only before forty days. After forty days, that's. Right, that's not the discussion anymore, right? Exactly. It's a life, and but that's it. by the way, you should know that regarding your question, now I'm going to answer you. That there also there are certain cases where we also do allow to to for to, to do masturbation. What does that mean? There are certain cases that a person needs to.